physique of free energy special interest group the science meet spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Um, we had a very good meeting, our 102nd physic meeting last month. Uh, Alfred was appearing with me in a forum together with uh, our first speaker, Sperry Andrews, talking about discussing about consciousness, consciousness and evolution. And folks, if you want to know what we were talking about, please go to our video channel. Uh, you'll be able, this time, this one was uh, published in YouTube, whereas the other one that uh, Patty Brassard was appearing to talk about updates was published on BitChute. So do subscribe to our channels. And I also urge you to subscribe to our Telegram group because that's when you could interact with each other. Uh, no holes barred. You can actually organize a study group for whatever speaker that you've come across that would interest you because this is a platform where we are learning together. And isn't it nice to have this opportunity to learn from some of the brilliant minds in the world? So oh, that physics is a platform where science meets spirituality, where we invite um, speakers, some of the most brilliant speakers from all schools of thoughts to come and share with us their knowledge, their skills, their, their technology, their, their thoughts, and uh, their science and their spirit as well. And so together we learn to progress with our spiritual growth as well as the scientific experimentations or technological progress. So we can together be able to achieve our divine mission to free humanity on this planet. Thank you, Pontus. So if we could just go through to the agenda, then straight away into that. That's wonderful. So today is the 3rd of August. And we have our co-chairs together. Isn't that wonderful? All are present. Dr. Fress Fressel, Pontus, and James Rink. <laughs> um, right. Uh, yeah, you can go to our website. Our website is truevisionofpeace.com forward slash physic.html and uh, subscribe to all of our channels, please. So you won't be left behind in what we got to share here with you. Everything here is free, folks, and we do it with our hearts. It's a labor of love. And if you've got anything to pay for, we so welcome that and we'll be so grateful because all these years, six years we've been going now, it's all through our own pockets. Yeah, we don't have any funding, no grants. What we're looking for some. And somehow we managed to trundle along and get all this stuff for you. Right, this is our agenda. The first session will be futurist Alfred Lambremont Weber of Omni University, researcher author, who will be presenting a revelation preparing Earth for the return of Christ. And he'll be talking about my journey, Landing Heaven on Earth, which is another book that he had written. He's a renowned author of many books, Transformation, Choice, Love of Others, New Species for the Golden Age, Star Wars City, Organization Chart, you know, Earth, Mission Skills and Assignments, Mystery of MA370, oh, oh, the Malaysian Airlines flight, <laughs> Yellow Race Genes, Exposing the MK Ultra Infiltration of Urantia, Self Delusion, and the Ongoing Fulfillment of the Cointel Pro, Cointel Pro Destruction of the Implementation of the Urantia Revelation by Deep State Military Intelligence, Transhumanist, and Sentient AI. Artificial Intelligence Infiltration, Alfred. On the second session, we have Janice Bacello, who will be discussing the facts about the Dark Forces' final, final attempt to take over and or destroy the Earth through the use of alien frequencies and lab-created radiation. The Dark Ones have literally woven a webbed prison around the Earth that is designed to trap alter, mutate, and ultimately destroy all living things, including Earth itself. 
Janice will be, well, we have won the war, we all know that, <laughs> but um, it's good to recap and for people to know what was going on behind the scenes and not Richard Janice is very, very like skillful mm -hmm. and uh, particularly knowledgeable about. She will discuss the background of nuclear, wireless and ultrasonic technologies and share information about the true purpose for CERN and HUB uh, in operation. She will also discuss how easy it is to put an end to this, which we must do if we are to save ourselves and the earth. And of course, when they say they won the war, the war is won, so all right, but why is it still going on, the old, <laughs> the old agenda? Well, because we have to stand up for ourselves and do something about it. We can't wait for everything to be put on a silver platter for us, right? So um, after the Q&A then, uh, we would adjourn the meeting to after the second session, I mean, to the 104th Physic meeting on the 7th of September, 2022. So do pen it down in your diary, please. 7th of September, Physics 104th meeting. Oh, thank you, Quintus. Right. So if you want to know how you can be informed um, by receiving a MailChimp newsletter report out to you to, in, to, to invite you to our meetings, do, do join us. Go to our website and click on Join Us. There is a link there, Join Us. When you click on that, you will be automatically put in the database where you, once a month only, we don't spam people, just once a month, we send out an email to invite you to join physics public meetings. And these are our channels, our YouTube, BitChute, Odyssey channels, and uh, join us on our Telegram group, okay? It's called physic underscore group. Right, thank you so much, Pontus, for helping me share screen here. All right, so without much ado, I am going to introduce Alfred. Alfred is really, really, well, <laughs> somebody that you need to really pay attention to, for he's very accomplished indeed. Alfred Lambrimont Weber. he's, okay, folks, every time whenever we have meetings like this, I always announce the speakers and I expect you to study the speaker's background so you can participate well. I also give samples of videos that the speakers had done before in the past so you know what the speaker's going to talk about. So it's easy for you to participate in the Q&A. Alfred's website link, uh, all the speakers, okay, <laughs> are having their website linked to their description in our website, in physics website anyway. So if you want to dig deeper because the subject interests you, you can always find a speaker and you can communicate directly as well. Okay, futurist Alfred Lambimund Weber is a change agent whose principal contributions have been, number one, founding the science of exopolitics through his 2000 book Exopolitics, number two, Discovery of the Omniverse 214 as the third major cosmological body after the universe and the multiverse through which humanity understands the cosmos as set out in his 214 book DEO, Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse. And number three, promulgation of the positive future equation, PFE, through which humans co-create a positive future on planet Earth, published in his 2017 book journey, and public expose of the chronogarchy, an interdimensional hidden power structure monitoring time space of Earth as its domain of influence operating as a secret government using quantum access time travel technologies to carry out its operations and mandates. A graduate of Yale University, Yale Law School, a, a Fulbright scholar, Alfred has taught at two universities, Yale and University of Texas, served as general counsel of the New York City EPA war crimes judge, 
United Nations Outer Space and Peace Representative and directed the 1977 proposed Carter White House ET communication study while a futurist at Stanford Research Institute. And Alfred is really <laughs> well known as he has been hosting a lot of, uh, uh, of the main, even the mainstream television and, and radio programs. It's amazing. You are such an accomplished man, Alfred. Now mm -hmm. I Thank will you. have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want a longer bio of Alfred, we, I will put a link there, okay, as well. But he's got a long, long, long bio. I can only read this much. <laughs> thank you, Alfred. Over to you. Well, well, thank you very much. I feel very privileged and very honored uh, to be able to make this presentation uh, today. And I and I also want to keep within the time um, the time uh, outlines. And so I'm gonna to go to share screen now. Uh, and, I, and I'm especially honored because of the subject matter, which I think um, goes to, as I was looking to uh, our, uh, the, this group's uh, aims to foster goodwill and unity. And uh, so this, this PowerPoint, where we're going to be sharing, uh, I'll just be, be doing it here and then opening it uh, up to, and I hope that people can see that. Can, can people see this? Oh, yes. Oh, good. Okay, so the title of this PowerPoint is A Revelation, Preparing Earth for the return of Jesus the Christ. And we're going to be going into a definition of all of these terms and keep it in the scientific area and uh, not in the area of belief, even though uh, uh, there's a very, very large world population that has been in these areas because of, of belief. This is a book, a revelation on the life and teachings of G Jesus. Uh, it's now up at our learning platform, which is omniversity.us. It's also on, on, on Amazon. It's on pre-order now. So um, if you order it before Labor Day, it's one third of the price. It's very low anyway. It's like really cheap. So um, we're going to start now, and this is a quote uh, of Jesus's supposedly from the Urantia book, which is one of the texts that we'll be discussing here. Religions are not made. The religions of men grow up over long periods of time, while the revelations of God flash upon earth in the lives of the men it should say when we, wherever we have men, it means humankind, meaning women and men uh, who reveal God to their fellows. Uh, so I, I, I'm here in sort of that expanded role, not only in scholarly, but I am attempting as a person who has written three books on the omniverse, which posit that there is an intelligent source to reality to represent that source here as a revelation. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, that book. Uh, uh, and to summarize it, uh, the revelation on the life and teachings of Jesus is kind of special angle is that it include the chronogarchies, DARPA, CIA, and the US government's creation of top secret quantum access time travel documentaries of the historical crucifixion and resurrection of Joshua ben Joseph, Jesus of Nazareth, made public by the whistleblowing of US chrononaut Andrew D. Bishago, an eyewitness to the time travel video documentary of Jesus' 
crucifixion. The publication of this chronogarchy top secret quantum access Jesus project provides direct forensic evidence of the truth. We'll be looking at that and authenticity of the synoptic gospels. We'll be looking at them of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And importantly, of part four of the fifth apocal revelation, the Urantia book, The Life and Teachings of Jesus. And it forms the basis for this book of Revelation on the life and teachings of Jesus. The chronogarchy is, quote, an interdimensional hidden power structure monitoring the time space of Earth as its domain of influence, operating as a secret government using quantum access time travel technologies to carry out its mandates. And uh, I don't have it there, but you can go to omniversity.us here and this year as well, 2022, we've come out with our 800 page book, The Chronogarchy, which it, it is the book which documents the secret time travel government. And it's based on whistleblower accounts, people coming in from the secret uh, quantum access project. So I just wanted to state that. Now, what's the intent of this book, right? So people wanna know why. Number one is to explore and affirm a spiritual hypothesis that the Urantia book is a 2072 page fifth epochal revelation. This is an example of it in its book form was celestially authorized and published in 1955 as a celestial emergency measure to open the way on earth that's called Urantia, Ur, earth, maybe, who knows, for an eventual second coming of Jesus. We'll talk about that. A firm is stated by Urantia book expert Byron Belitzos. He, Jesus Christ, is the creator of a local universe. By the way, and this is very wrong. he has a co-equal female partner. This is a being that does not incarnate. This is a creator deity. And so then I said, so that there's kind of a yin yang creator deity that creates the local universe and it was the male that incarnated as a human on earth for this particular mission. Is that what you're saying, Byron? Yes, in this cosmology, only males incarnate. The female doesn't have to incarnate because the female is omnipresent and the female is or embodies space and time. A female is matter, matrix. The matrix, mater, matter, matrix, mother. So that's a bit of metaphysics and cosmology there. But I thought it very interesting. And the quote, church, which we'll talk about, which really entered in through the Roman emperor, and that's why we have the Roman Catholic Church, has hidden the female deity. So over time, uh, here I've got to, uh, okay, number three, report on the chronogarchy, DARPA, CIA, and US government's creation of top secret quantum access time travel video documentaries of the historical crucifixion and resurrection of Joseph and Joseph, Jesus of Nazareth. These quantum access Documentaries appear to provide direct forensic evidence of the apparent truth and authenticity of part four of the Urantia book, the life and teachings of Jesus, and form a basis for a revelation on the life and teachings of Jesus. Number four, expose the Urantia community. There's a worldwide community of people who are readers of the Urantia book, but it's been infiltrated to be infiltrated by MK Ultra technology, all this channeling, self-delusion and ongoing fulfillment of the Kalinto Pro destruction 
of the implementation of the Urantia revolution by deep state military intelligence, transhumanist and sentient artificial intelligence and to indict these genocidal perpetrators. What it is, is that when the, when these, this celestial transmission came in and at about the time that this sort of MK Ultra directed energy weapons, synthetic technology, synthetic telepathy was de developed and the infiltration of the Urantia foundation of its movement by CIA operatives, you know, for the Course in Miracles, people remember Findhorn and the New Age Findhorn in Scotland, this farm that was spiritual. Well, it was built right next to a UK Royal Air Force base. And the channeling there was that was supposedly going on was actually synthetic telepathy being broadcast from the UK military base. So we get into a lot of this expose, but and show what the difference is between the synthetic telepathy that is part of the deep state and you know the spiritual uh, uh, transmissions that antedated MK Ultra that are trying to reach here. So we're trying to deconstruct all of that. And here, here, here we show, this is just like a segment from uh, the book that now you can download part four, you can download the, actually the whole 2000 page of the Ancient Book free in PDF, DOCX, EPUB, or audio format. You can download it as a free audio book. Uh, there's the link and here is an, in the book, we give the uh, the sort of the table of contents. So we're trying to make this user friendly to counteract and get underneath the really intense uh, deep state infiltration and in MKL for this thing going on since just after 1955. Um, now, spiritual hypothesis. The Urantia Revelation as the 2072 page Apocalypse Revelation was celestially authorized and published in 1955 as a celestial emergency measure because they're monitoring this planet, which is one of uh, 27 planets that went over in a rebellion against the universe administration. We can get into that later. And uh, 1955 is at the height of the Cold War, the Soviet Union. Uh, this solar system, you already had the planet Maldek that had been pulverized into the asteroid belt in a reptilian human nuclear war. And the planet Mars, which was also a verdant human planet like Earth, was made into a flat pumpkin shaped planet with about a million humans under the surface of Mars and just reptiles on the surface as part of that nuclear war. And so Earth and Venus are the last, uh, uh, you know, remaining human planets. Venus is very fortunate. It's up at 5D. It's won its war against the invading sentient artificial intelligence. Earth is the one that's had its back against the war because of the invading reptilian nuclear holocaust and danger that we could become another uh, uh, another asteroid belt. So the Urantia revelation, a hypothesis is that it was celestially authorized as, as an emergency measure in 1955. And we take excerpts from it for example, here's one that talks about the order in which things happen on Earth, on this planet. It says, again, we find Urantia out of step 
with his sister spheres in that your Jesus has promised to return. That promise he will certainly fulfill, but no one knows whether his second coming will precede or follow the appearances of magisterial or teacher sons. There's, there's a whole, this being a life-bearing planet, there's a whole sequence here because as my three books on the omniverse show, universes are like machines for the development of souls. So that's kind of the backdrop. And uh, let me just uh, go here again. Uh, here we have some more spiritual hi hypotheses. If we go this again from the Urantia book, it shows that in the early days when the Jesus' the second coming failed to materialize early, we have all of the successive believing generations who lived on earth entertaining the same inspiring but disappointing hope of when does the second coming happen? That's all based on faith and belief, not on science. And so uh, uh, now we have here uh, the church, as soon as it was established, began to teach that the kingdom was in reality to appear at the culmination of the Christian age, at the second coming of Christ. This is a quote again from the Urantia book, and this brings in the whole concept of the church. And it's a double-edged sword here, because as we'll show, what the church was really, and there were two meanings of the church, they were sort of the early Christians, but at some point, the Roman Empire, uh, through Flavius, uh, Josephus, and Titan, uh, the Emperor T Titus and Vespasian, they took over Christianity because, as the Dead Sea Scrolls showed and evidenced, um, uh, the Messianic movement at this point predicted a violent messiah that would overthrow Rome. And so what the Romans did is that they took Flavius Josephus, who was an accomplished theologian and propagandist. They made him part of uh, the emperor's family. And there's a lot of scholarship showing that he may have authored all of or part of the four gospels, the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That doesn't mean that Jesus didn't exist. It means that, uh, and, and it's very intricate, is that the church came in to create a peaceful Messiah that everybody would follow to turn the other cheek to obey Caesar and render to Caesar. And this would counteract the Messiah that they were expecting that was set out in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, so uh, in a way, the gospels and the church have made a false flag operation of Jesus over the last 2000 years. And so that's what this is referring to here. And this is some of the nuances that we can now bring out in, in time. Now, here's a guy, sooner or later, another and greater John the Baptist is due to arise proclaiming the kingdom of God is at hand, meaning a return to the high spiritual concept of Jesus. Now, you know, I had to look at my, my own psychology because on my mother's side, my mother is from Cuba, and her, her mother, my grandmother, was called Jane the Baptist, Juana Bautista. And my mother was called Juanita Bautista, which means Jane the Baptist. And they were from a city in Cuba called Santi Spiritu, which means the Holy Spirit. So these are themes that, you know, are in here. So as I was doing this, I had to do a bit of 
psychology on myself. I have a psychotherapist degree from the University of Texas and kind of say, okay, am I really trying to act out a John the Baptist thing here delusionally through this book? Uh, uh, but the function here actually is quite, quite grounded. Um, a John the Baptist is due to arise doing all of this without any way referencing to the visible church on earth or to the anticipated second coming of Christ. There must come a revival of the actual teachings of Jesus. Such a restatement at will undo the work of his early followers who went about to create socio philosophical systems of belief regarding the fact that Michael, Jesus, sojourn on earth. In other words, from the very earliest days, Jesus' mission was so co-opted by the church, meaning by the Romans and by the Roman emperor that made it into a world thing for the power of Rome such that even Paul and the epistles of Paul are all about pay your taxes and obey the laws because he was following all of the Roman, he was part of that part of early Christianity that, you know, they were co-opted by the Roman emperor. Uh, in this way, an historical religion displaced that teaching in which Jesus have blended man's highest moral ideas and spiritual ideas with man's most sublime hope for the future, eternal life. And that was the gospel of the kingdom. So this is kind of an effort to get back to the original uh, uh, things here. I wanna kind of speed up. Uh, so the doctrine of the second coming became incorporated into the teaching of the Christ Christians. And, uh, uh, and the second coming was associated with the destruction of Jerusalem. But then as it turns out, because there's good evidence to show that it was Flavius Josephus as part of the Emperor Titan's official retinue who actually wrote a number of the the Gospels, the, the prediction that Jerusalem would be destroyed, which was fulfilled, was actually Titan as the emperor destroying Jerusalem. And since the Roman emperors were thought to be God, there's some thought that, in fact, Jesus was made a God almost as to make the Roman emperor a god. There's kind of a double play going. So in the same way that you have disinformation and propaganda now in modern governments, there's an interplay between the early gospels and the Romans of double disinformation. This doesn't negate the the existence of Jesus, but it shows the motivation behind the Urantia book because the four gospels are really were written, if they were, were partially written by Roman propagandists and have been instruments of the global deep state for the last 2000 years to maintain the deep state, which is a quasi reptilian order the last 2000 years. And uh, here, the Urantia book says that, because talking about this, uh, it says consequently, uh, uh, early in the second century, a Jewish apocalyptic about the Messiah written by one Celta, who was attached to the court of the emperor Caligula was bodily copied into the Matthew Gospel and subsequently added to the Mark and Luke records. So it says that um, 
uh, uh, this went from a being part of uh, the Emperor Caligula's kind of propaganda mill, and it got copied into the Matthew Gospel and then into the Mark and into the uh, uh, Luke Gospel. But the Apostle John's is it was pure. It wasn't infiltrated. And so that's why you see such a difference between if you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you have such a difference between the apostle, the, the gospel of John and the other gospels. And we should, we'll, we'll, we'll see that shortly. Um, and, and so here, uh, uh, it, the, the formulation of that belief eventually became associated uh, the second coming with the end of the age, even the end of the world, you know. The headlines were, if Nancy Pelosi lands in Taiwan, is this the end of the world in a nuclear holocaust? I mean, you know, I've been dealing with a nuclear issue for a long time now, and it's all apocalyptic. Um, and and uh, uh, so the message of the early believers had to do with preaching about the facts of his first coming and teaching the hopes of the second coming, an event which they deemed to be very near at hand. Uh, however, if you bring this up to the um, Urantia book experts like Byron Belitzos, who's written a book called Your Evolving Soul, this is from an interview that I did with Byron. Uh, what he says is that according to this, what the religions, in other words, the, the, the religions, the Catholics, the Anglicans, you remember the Catholics, this is the Pope, which is kind of the reptilians, you know, uh, the, the Anglicans is the queen, which is the reptilians again, uh, whether it's the Maitreya, the Imam of Islam, or it's the return of Christ, uh, uh, that is that is what we're uh, the 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 being who is being described in the Urantia book is a magisterial being, and and so he he's saying that that we're waiting for a being that's going to terminate an age and inaugurate a new age. It's kind of a archetype it's not necessarily the christ in fact what we're seeing now is that the whole christ which comes from the greek christos which meant a specific type of messiah which is the one that they were waiting for in the dead sea scrolls kind of a very violent messiah to overthrow the new world order uh these are all archetypes that people are worshiping because there are large global deep state institutions like the Roman Catholic Church, like the Anglican Church that are promoting this, okay? And that's separate from Jesus. Jesus was taken over like a false flag and made into this thing. Uh, and okay, so how does the, quantum access time travel video, which is talked about in this book. And we have a whistleblower, a uh, former US chrononaut, Andy, Andy Bashaga, who's seen the, the DARPA CIA video documentary of the crucifixion. Uh, and his father seen the one of the resurrection, and we talk about this in the book. How does this affect our analysis? This is quoting from what Andy Bashago says about the documentary of the resurrection. Quote, two men appear. He didn't say angels. Two men appear. Jesus stands up, and the three of them push the rock away, and he walks out of his crib. Okay, so in particular, we're very, obviously very astonishing when she said what you're saying, right? We also have footage of the resurrection. So that 
this quantum access time travel report of two men rather than angels as reported in some of the synoptic gospels, for example, Matthew 28 appearing in the tomb where Jesus is. Why do you have all these differences if now we've gone back through quantum access time travel, which is, as you know, we're, we're in a time space hologram and, and you can now, there are eight types of time travel technology and you can dial up and you know go back there and see exactly what occurred. Okay, so let's do a bit of analysis. Here we have the, the one synoptic gospel, which was Luke, which is one of the ones that even the Urantia book says, oh, that got mixed up with some of the stuff that was in the Roman Emperor Caligula's, you know, propaganda mill. And there, with the resurrection, they say that when they came around and they could not find the body of the Lord Jesus, two men stood by them in shining garments. They didn't say angels, but they said two men in shining garments. So is that an angel or not? It's kind of two men, so it's a little bit close. You know, and saying, oh, the Son of Man, uh, uh, you know, and the third day has risen again. So that L Luke chapter 24 is the closest to of the synoptic gospels of what the actual time travel video documentary shows. And this is from eyewitnesses who've seen that DARPA CIA video documentary. You know, we're doing research here. I don't have the witnesses right in front of me. I'm dealing with Andy Bashago. He's a colleague. He's a lawyer. He's admitted to the, uh, the federal district court in the state of Washington. I'm a lawyer. I'm admitted to the bar of the District of Columbia. I'm a judge on three tribunals of conscience, we're committed to telling the truth. You know, so we're trying to give accurate reports here. Uh, but let's go to what the Urantia book says. And the Urantia book purports to be, oh, this is the version of Jesus on universe television, okay? So this is the Urantia book paper 189, which is, the resurrection, and what it says, it doesn't talk about angels at all. It talks about that all these kind of celestial beings came in and did a time acceleration and turned the body, the material body of Jesus to just by dust, by accelerating time, and that the spirit of Jesus was materialized into what they call a marancha being, which is like a spirit being that you can see. M-O-R-O-N-T-I-A, marancha. And it says that Mary Magdalene came in there and couldn't see anybody and and, and she asked, where have you taken the, the master? And then all of a sudden she says, oh my God, it's you, Jesus. And all the other women, quote, recognized that it was the master that stood before them in glorified form, and they quickly knelt before him. So not even the Urantia book version that's supposed to be on universe television conforms to what the Reports are of the quantum access time travel video documentaries made by DARPA CIA. So this often happens in especially multi-dimensional historical research. I want to add a personal note, okay? 
You've heard of the angel Moroni, right? M-O-R-O-N-E, okay? So the first five letters of that are M-O-R-O-N, moron, morancha. The first five letters of that are moron. I think that one has to look at the possibility that all of this is like more manipulation of the human race, you poor morons. And we're now busting it with our uh, time travel technology that can show what really went on. Now, what is the closest version? Well, the closest version is in a document that has been published in a thing called the Phoenix Journal, and they called his name Emmanuel, I am Sananda, by Sananda, Jesus, and Judas Iscariot. <laughs> According to the Phoenix Journal document, whose version of the resurrection is consistent with the version of Jesus' resurrection depicted in the Project Pegasus Quantum Access Time Travel video, documentary number one, Judas Iscariot, who is depicted both in the Synoptic Gospels and in the Urantia book as the traitor of all traitors, was actually an intimate friend and ally of Jesus and was, quote, set up and discredited by the son of a Pharisee, Simeon Ihariel, uh, similarly named, who had a son named Judah Iharia, and that this was all a case of mistaken identity. The Pharisees, in their evil cunningness, set up Judas Iscariot with the son of the Pharisee named Judah Iharriot, and set up Judas as the villain when Judah Iharriot was the villain. Number two, Jesus did not die on the cross. He was taken moribund and lied to the tomb where he was secretly revived by friends, plausibly by the two men who appear in the Project Pegasus Quantum Access time travel video. And the Phoenix Journal document is reportedly authored by Jesus writing under his spiritual name, Germanuel, and Judas Iscariot to set the historical rate. Uh, record straight, and there is the link. And let me just go one more. And here is from there. And you can see they said the soldiers then went to the tomb and they sealed the rock which had been placed in the opening. They knew not, however, of the second opening so that assistance could come and go from the secret entrance without being seen. On the third day, Germanuel was strong enough to stand and walk. Easter was passed and the first day of the week had come and three nights and also passed after Germanuel had said that he would live again after his apparent death. So it's this version where everything is set straight, where Jesus didn't die and they got into a secret thing in the thing that actually it appears that the DARPA time travel video took up. So I'm just presenting evidence, right? Now, this is from a, a, one of the books that does the analysis on the four synoptic gospels and says, that is the work of uh, Flavius Josephus, who was adopted by the Flavian family of the emperor Vespasian, and later Titus, who was commissioned to write the four synoptic gospels as a myth because they were overcoming the, the Jewish rebels at that point that are described in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they had to create a peaceful Messiah who said, honor Caesar, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, pay your taxes. And they set up a parallel uh, in the gospels to the life of Tit of, of, of Titus, who comes along 70 years later and destroys Jerusalem. 
So the whole thing is like this propaganda disinformation trip. Quote, this topological storyline reveals that the Jesus who interacted with the disciples following the crucifixion, the actual Jesus that Christians have unwittingly worshiped for 2000 years was Titus Flavius. The discovery of the Flavian invention of Christianity creates a new understanding of the entire first century. Such a revelation is disorienting and the reader will find the following points useful in understanding the new history that this work presents. Christianity did not originate among the lower classes in Judea. It was a creation of the Roman imperial family, the Flavians. By Christianity, they mean the church. The gospels were not written by the followers of a Jewish Messiah, but by the intellectual circle surrounding the three Flavian emperors, Vespasian and his two sons, Titus and Domitian. And that's why the four gospels are so identical and are set up like a propaganda thing, except for the gospel of John that kind of escaped a little bit. The gospels were written by following the 73 CE war between the Romans and the Jews and many of the events of Jesus' ministry are satirical depictions of events from that war. What they say is that all of the women who were resisting the Romans were called Marys, just as in Vietnam, all of the Vietnamese that were resisting the American soldier were called Charlie. <laughs> you have to get into what was really happening. The purpose of Christianity was supersession. It was designed to replace the nationalistic and militaristic messianic movement in Judea as evidenced in the Dead Sea Scrolls with a religion that was pacifistic and would accept Roman rule. And that's why we have to go now back to the authentic life and teachings of Jesus, not to the Roman fabrication, which the Roman Catholic Church and the Anglican Church under the reptilian British crown has been teaching for all these centuries for its own purposes. Okay, so here is just for, you know, just the shift and I've been at it for 40 minutes. So let, let me just continue. Preparing earth for the return of Christ, that light and love and power restore the planet on earth. This is by a colleague, Donald Ware, who is a reader of the Urantia book, but it just gives you kind of more of a Urantia book reader perspective because I'm kind of a deconstructionist, but this gives you more, you know, from the inside the Urantia book perspective. And so this is the view of the local universe that this is kind of the exopolitics of the local universe. Uh, of the Urantia book, yeah, the local universe of Nebadon, that's what they call it, the constellation of Nolashadek, the star system of Satania, because Satan was the, you know, the head of it, but he became a lieutenant of Lucifer that rebelled. And now we have Earth or Urantia. And these are the kingdom of heaven charts. This is what the Urantia book portrays as the spiritual dimensions of the omniverse. If you go to my three books on the omniverse, uh, right now I'm seeing a very, very clear uh, uh, representation of the Urantia book's version of the spiritual dimensions of paradise with, with all sorts of, you know, ins and outs. And this is of uh, Orvantan, the super universe. And uh, this is of Nebadon, the local universe that was created by Christ Jesus. And this is uh, of our local uh, system here with Lucifer and Satan and the disloyal seraphim in the prison spheres after the Lucifer rebellion. And this is the situation before 
the Lucifer Rebellion, you know, when it started, uh, this was about 200,000 years ago that Lucifer was actually our system. Sovereign with Satan as his first assistant, Caligastia, Dalagastia, Abaddon, Beelzebub, all of these names are actually the names of fallen angels that then entered into the demonology that has come down to us over time. Now, we're, we're out of that. So we're back to what the Urantia book describes now is seraphic planetary government. And that is that at the seraphic or angelic level or at the celestial level, there's a planetary prince and Michael of Nebadon, it's sort of the spiritual oversoul of the person who became Jesus is actually the planetary prince or the spiritual leader of earth. There's a commission of 24 counselors now, people like Elijah. There's 12 core of master seraphim, of master angels, of apocal angels, overseers, progress angels, who oversee the social age, ages, religious guardians for ideals and values. There's the angels of national life that, that look over the political sphere on earth, angels of the races, uh, angels of the future that plan for the advancement of humanity. This is kind of the evolutionary or spiritual over control of the planet. Why, why we haven't self-destructed yet as Tiamat did and as Mars did, and why Jesus or came here and said, drew a line in the sand 2000 years ago and said, this is not gonna self-destruct this planet. The angels of health to prevent disease and the home seraphim, a basic institution for the family and the home. And then there after that, uh, uh, you have the angels of industry for it. I'm just repeating what the Urantia book holds. The angels of industry for industrial development, the angels of diversion that oversee play, humor, and rest, the angels of superhuman ministry, the minister to all other superhuman life on the planet. So that there's a balance. These are people who tend, they're like therapists to these different aspects of life. And aside from these specific tasks, the master seraphim mobilize, train, and maintain what's called the reserve core of destiny. And those are the master angels. And the reserve core of destiny consists of mortals who display a special capacity for being secretly rehearsed for emergency missions who are wholeheartedly dedicated to some special cause and possess an extraordinarily versatile thought adjuster. That is sort of the Urantia book's term for a soul. Now, I should state that in 1981, when I first read the Urantia book and absorbed it from cover to cover in Melbourne, Australia, uh, at the beginning of a trial in a court there, uh, on which the Urantia book in part was on trial and the people who had brought the, the, the legal action were trying to prove that it was a cult. And I was testifying on the other side and it was through my testimony that it was shown that it wasn't a cult. And in the middle of the trial, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth arrived and with her dread retinue as the trial was proceeding, drove right in front of the courthouse <laughs> during the trial, this is in 1981. So upper theater, we used to call it. Who knows if that's kawinky dink or, you know? Uh, so <clears throat> my sort of contribution, by the way, at that time, there were these angelic voices that came to me and said, Alfred, you're now a member of the Reserve Corps of Destiny, okay? I don't know if that was, you know, 
MK Ultra, or that's real, okay? But I'm just reporting it here. These are two of my three books on the Omniverse. You can get them at omniversity.us or anywhere online, Amazon, and other places. And this is my, my, uh, my books on the Omniverse are my way of putting according to science, using the scientific method and scientific data of the cosmology that the Urantia book with its kind of uh, transmissions was trying to transmit. And these grew out of a, a request that was initially made to me by Oxford University Press that approached me in 2013 or so and asked me to write a book on quote extraterrestrials and the law and out of that grew my books on the omniverse uh, at oxford university press is a division of oxford oxford university which is kind of the a cathedral of learning and of the scientific method so that if you're looking for a science-based sort of cosmology an expression, um, uh, it's here. And I see I've done 53 minutes. Uh, what I've done is, and so I, I'm not gonna go through them because there isn't enough time, but what are the universe, the multiverse and the omniverse? These are the three principal cosmological bodies through which humanity comprehends the cosmos. What is our universe? Our universe is an organic singularity of time, energy, space, and matter that was discovered by the Sumerian astronomers around 3500 BC. The visible universe accounts for only 4% only of all matter in the material universe. And dark matter is the term the scientific canon gives to the remaining 96%. According to an interdimensional source, the Urantia book, the name of our universe, like our galaxies, the Milky Way is universal. What is our multiverse? The multiverse is the totality of all universes named after a term multiverse coined by the American psychologist, William James in 1895. What is the omniverse? The omniverse is the integrated whole of all universes in the multiverse, plus the spiritual dimensions that include the intelligent civilization of souls, spiritual entities, and source. Now, because of the press of time, I'm just gonna go through these slides rapidly. Uh, but when was the omniverse discovered? Basically 2014 in three different books. Those who are watching this can stop the video and read this. What are the key purposes of the dimensional ecology of the omniverse? It appears to be the creation and development of souls and spiritual beings in uh, the spiritual dimensions. It's like the physical universes are machines for soul development. What is the omniverse equation? Like E equals MC squared? The omniverse equation is omniverse equals multiverse plus spiritual dimensions. Why is the omniverse a new hypothesis of reality? While not making specific reference to the omniverse, advanced conceptual physics, such as Professor Amit Goswami, have argued that contemporary science assumption that only matter consists or ultimately elementary particles is real is inadequate and that a new hypothesis of reality is required to account for all the energy and the omniverse hypothesis does that. Is, is omniverse science the science of God? Yes, because it's how you, you account for God under the omniverse hypothesis. How many universes are, are there in the multiverse? Three Stanford scientists, two, two Stanford scientists have shown that an estimate is 10 to the seventh to the seventh 
if you write that number out, it's more than 260 million miles long. That's how many universes there are in our multiverse. How many habitable, habitable Earth-like planets are there in our universe? One German supercomputer simulation estimates that there are 500 billion galaxies in our universe and there are 100 billion habitable Earth-like pla planets in our Mil Milky Way galaxy and 50 sextillion habitable Earth-like planets in our particular universe. What is the number of intelligent civilizations in our multiverse? A conservative estimate is that there are 100 billion communicating intelligent civilizations in our universe. So in the multiverse, it's 100 billion times that 260 million mile long number of universes in the multiverse. How are world governments communicating to the human population about the universe? Cover up city. <clears throat> what was the CIA Robertson panel, 1953? That was where <clears throat> That was the order went out from the deep state to say that anything associated with intelligent life in the universe or multiverse was to be ridiculed. That goes back to 1953. Obviously, I'm oversimplifying. What are the intelligent civilization of souls? The intelligent civilization of souls are individuated non-local conscious and intelligent entities that are in based in the dimensions of the spiritual dimensions or afterlife and each soul is a holographic fragment of source and by extension by holographic science the whole of the hologram is contained in each fragment so the whole of source of God is contained in each of our souls. So that's why when you say namaste, I salute the God within you, that is scientifically correct. What is world public opinion? According to a 2011 Ipsos poll uh, in 23 nations, about 51% of humanity believe in a divine entity, 80% don't know and 17% just aren't sure. And um, so that's about it. That's a bit about me, which I think was read at the beginning. This is my book, uh, My Journey Landing Heaven on Earth is just to share with you an experience that I had in February of 1973, which kind of set me on this course. And that is, uh, you can get this at omniversity.us or online. Scene one, I'm in my loft in February 1973. Alfred, my name, is derived from the old English Elf Raid Council. Elves are considered to be supernatural beings having special powers of seeing into the future. Alfred, my name, encapsulates the essence of his spirits. And what Alfred means is elfin wise counselor. So I'm an elfin wise counselor. And I was there at the beginning of my loft. Suddenly I'm enveloped by this being. I asked, who are you? I asked the presence. A deep pause ensued. The presence said in thought, I am the Holy Spirit. Boom. I was mind blown. This is 1973. Uh, and so the Holy Spirit, Holy of Holies. And so then I asked, who am I? I asked, and then the Holy Spirit responded saying, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I shall found my church, which is a quote from Matthew 24, which is most probably written by uh, 
uh, a propagandist for, it was a line written by a propagandist for the Roman emperor, but you know, it's, it's how interdimensional beings like to try and get humans going, right? And so it was really like meant to like, oh, we're gonna make this guy try and get me. And so from there, I went into a missing time experience aboard a ship of the Regional Galactic Governance Council, which includes the Pleiadians, the Alpha Centaurians and others. That was presented at an international UFO conference with um, Andrew Mashago. Andrew Mashago was taken aboard the same ship. So he's an eyewitness of me on the ship. So I'm just not telling stories out of tale. And up in time, um, uh, former president Jimmy Carter was also taken up in that ship. And what was planned up there and coordinated was my becoming uh, director of the Carter White House extraterrestrial communication study after his election. And in, in November uh, 1976, after Carter was elected president, Jimmy Carter sent a personal emissary to me, uh, asked me to lunch out at the Carlyle Hotel in New York. I lived in New York at the time. And uh, we had a long conversation. I, I could get into that. It's, it's in a number of my books. Uh, and uh, I was invited down to Washington and that is how uh, the uh, Jimmy Carter White House Extraterrestrial Disclosure Project was joined. So I think that the Carter Bashago Weber ET abduction of February 1976 was created uh, to facilitate A, the coordination of President Jimmy Carter's election as an ET disclosure president. Remember he had ET disclosure as his platform because he was one of the few human sold one term along with J J JFK presidents, all the others, you know, have reptilian souls to Andy Bashago's possible future election, election as an ET disclosure president when Andy ran for president in 2016 on a hundred proposal platform, including making time travel and teleportation and all the free energy that's an SIG platform, he was blinded so that he's legally blind now. The deep state retaliated against him for going public with this. And also to have US chrononaut and attorney Andy Bashago as an eyewitness to my being aboard these ships. Uh, so if you want to see my two books on time travel, you can see the chronogarchy and timelines of the chronogarchy, which is a NaNoWriMo 2021 award-winning time travel novel. And so thank you very much. Uh, my three books on the omniverse and what that is, is a summary of a science-based interpretation of these five diagrams, which is what the Urantia book states is the spiritual, the essence of the spiritual dimensions. So I'm, this is an earth critique of uh, all of these issues. This is my critique as an investigative uh, reporter and a reader of the Arantia book since 1981, who testified in court about the Arantia book in 1981 on these issues. Crystal, uh, did you have some questions that you wanted to jump in with? Yeah. Are you starting the Q&A or is James doing it as well? Uh, I'll leave it to the two of you to- <laughs> Okay, uh, we've got two in the queue that have uh, questions. I have one and I can finish mine and hand it over to James to run the, the room if you'd like. Uh, That's good, Press. thank you. Uh, 
<clears throat> Alfred, we this is a kind of a wrap up question. The time travel, which was you stated, this is the celestial emergency measure. What was the reason or the intent of the time travel project to the execution of Christ and resurrection? What was their purpose? What was the reason why did they start this? Do you know? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I've, I've written uh, my book, The Chronogarchy, to make public the secret time travel government. Uh, and I've spoken to uh, time travelers like Andy Bashaga, who were operatives and time travelers within DARPA CIA. My understanding is, and, and uh, for example, uh, uh, the CIA determined to use time travel for statecraft. And that's why in 1971, all future US presidents were pre-identified, Bush Sr., Bush Jr., Clinton, Obama, Trump, and Biden so far. They were brought in in 1971, including Trump, and said, you're gonna be a future president. They were briefed on it. And they all have held that secret, including Trump so that all US elections have been a farce since then. They had other purposes, part of Andy Bashago's um, mission in 1971 as a chrononaut is that he would do, uh, he would go from 1971 to DARPA's forward time base in 2045, get time scrolls there and bring them back to 1975 to, to 1971. And the purpose of that was uh, through the time scrolls 2045, that was a way of the future informing the past of how to get to the future safely. 2045 would inform 1971 of significant issues that had to be faced by Earth between 1971 and 2045. And part of Andy's task as a, as a chrononaut was to bring those time scrolls back. Um, they also did exploration of historical events. He was sent back to the Gettysburg Address. He was sent back to the Lincoln assassination. And I imagine that as part of that, this is my speculation because you asked the key question and I have not had a time, I have not had access to the planners within DARPA CIA who planned that. So this is speculation. But I would say, why did you choose the crucifixion and the resurrection like the Gettysburg Address and the Lincoln assassination to go back to? And they would say, because uh, the United States is a Christian nation, they, they would say that uh, knowing that there's a deep alliance between the Roman Catholic Church and the CIA and the original founders, uh, even though that's in dispute now, understandably, and because because it's an historical event. And I imagine that they may have done time travel documentation of other historical events. This came forward. And so I said, well, let's, because I grew up at, from a very Catholic family in Catholic boarding schools, I said, well, let's compare the time travel to the gospels, to the Urantia book, to all the scholarship of Flavius Josephus so that we begin to see what's what, what's disinformation. And, and uh, uh, you know, the, the motto at CIA is, in their headquarters, is know the truth and it shall set you free. And uh, if the truth is that 
the Gospels are a propaganda fabrication, then that should be known. And the real identity of Jesus over the centuries should be known because not, you know, as well as the real identity of Muhammad, of Buddha, which are, you know, each one has a completely different identity. So that's, I'm speculating as to why CIA may have decided that. It's Super. pure speculation. But I think, in fact, there's a passage in the book, the chronovisor was developed by the Vatican and the Vatican subcontracted it to the Pentagon and the Vatican began the visits back to the life of Jesus in order to document it and originally did the time travel documentaries of the life and times of Jesus, including the crucifixion and the resurrection because uh, Ernetti and Gemelli, who are the two Vatican prelates who were attached to the project of developing chronovision, sort of the the time travel technology that's like a television set, along with Dr. Enrico Fermi, the Italian physicist that was attached to the project. They, they are quoted as saying that, that they started going back to Jesus. So I think that they did so at the request of the Pope, of the, uh, the College of Cardinals, and to justify their personal faith and the religious faith of the church and their political uh, organization. My, my view is that religions like state religions like the Vatican are political organizations. Thank you. Press, uh, can James, I, can I interject go ahead, go ahead, Kristen. Before, before you get to James, can I just interject? I just wanted the audience to know that if you want more details of what Alfred was just saying about the uh, uh, the chronon chrononizer, is that what it is? Yeah, please go to the last interview Alfred did with um, Nicholas Vinyamin, uh, where he had discussed in detail about Andrew Basaggio, uh, who had been attacked by the cabal and went blind because they knew that he's going to do great things for humanity because uh, uh, he had time traveled through history and he was the one who saw uh, what's going to happen in the future. The U.S. presidents all lined up and they were told and groomed to become it uh, when the time comes. And so um, Alfred has been working with Andrew Basaggio, just as Nicholas Vianamin has asked with Alfred, <coughs> can, can we be introduced to Andrew Basaggio to speak at Physic as well so we can get a lot more details uh, on that? I I will uh, request him. He and I are doing a joint uh, interview on August 6th. Today is August 3rd. Yeah. Uh, we're doing it on a possible hostile infiltration of uh, extraterrestrials on, on Earth. And I will ask him at that point. Uh, when he does do the intervention, uh, he'll do the Zoom, but it'll be by phone only because of his vision right. issues. Oh, right. He is yeah. under a lot of medical hardship now. He has to go to uh, kidney dialysis three times a week, plus the whole issues of the vision. He was attacked by the national security state uh, when he ran for president, and it was like an assassination almost. And so, uh, but I will ask him. Uh, and so we'll, you know, he, uh, uh, and I will recommend that that he does do, do it, but I can't, you Thank know, you, get, guarantee I, it. I understand that from uh, Kerry Cassidy's days, you know, way, way back in 2007, to uh, Andrew Basaji was first inter interviewed by Kerry. And he was talking about when he was a young boy, about seven years old, his father actually worked for the, um, oh well, <laughs> worked for, for the secret government and, and he was taken through a, um, 
if not a jump gate, but a teleportation device. And he was teleported within minutes to Mars. And I think James had, in, had the opportunity to interview him as well, right, James? So uh, he was supposed to be US president, but he was attacked badly, that's why he's got blind. And if he does become president, he's going to disclose all the advanced technologies to humanity, which is, yes, yes. wow, people, which is fantastic, people, but yeah. Donald Trump isn't. Yeah. yeah, people can go to his 100 proposals mm -hmm. uh, and Andrew Bashar, 100 proposals, which he had 100 proposals for a release of all of the secret. And what's interesting from an exopolitics point of view is that a planet does not achieve, in order to achieve advanced planet status, a planet has to have planetary teleportation. Planet Earth, this planet is, has had uh, planetary teleportation since the mid 1960s. But it was Donald Rumsfeld, who was sort of the head of that area that vetoed the public release of that and that dedicated planetary teleportation uh, to uh, US forces so that they could be teleported to the battlefield. So it would never be publicly released. And so that blocked advanced uh, planetary status for Earth has been blocked for the last 40, 60 years because of Donald Rumsfeld and Richard Nixon and those decisions, which I believe are very retrograde and which Andrew Bashago would have reversed. I was to have been either the Secretary of State or the Ambassador to the United Nations if he had won uh, the presidency, and I was fully ready to implement all the treaties, including treaties with uh, the off-planet uh, civilizations. Right, back to you, Fres. Has James gone for his uh, James is gone, yeah. Oh, okay. But anyway, Fres, you can handle it. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you, Crystal. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Glenn Mother. Uh, if you would unmute yourself, you have a question for Alfred, please. Thank you. Also, one of the uh, greatest laughs I've had in a long time, it was the adduction as opposed to someone saying it's an abduction. <laughs> I thought that was actually quite cute. So thank you for that, because it is, it, it's, we're being added to, you know, why does it have to be something detrimental? You know, we have limits instead of diets here. Anyway, one of the things, and I just want to reiterate some of the stuff that Alfred has done before, and I've done several shows lately with you, but one of the ones we did with Patty Broussard, there were four different ones we did at Project Incension, mm -hmm. and it had to do with a lot of the DNA, the genetics, the ET interfacing, and Patty had a lot of information that she shared being a former ex-sergeant with the U.S. Army and military, being over in Iraq with the Project Looking Glass. So I'm just wondering if that would be something as well that you would be open to that we could do kind of another round table, including that, because there was a lot of stuff to do with the councils mm -hmm. and the DNA and all that sort of thing, because the genetics, she talked about the hybridization with those bloodlines as well. Wonderful. Karen, so are you I'm, saying doing a round table with you and Patty Brassard and Alfred as well? And Andrew? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm open to that. Sounds I've been doing great. a lot of stuff too with the genetics too. That's mm -hmm. part of what I've been doing, not just with the contact vaccinosis, with the genius biofeedback, but the 5G and all of that, that ties into how it's mm -hmm. taken out these bloodlines and, and the people that know this kind of information. Mm -hmm. And as Alfred said, even with the, you know, counterpart, the male and the female, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, how things were set up original councils, that's mm -hmm. part of what Alfred's doing at peaceandspace.org mm -hmm. and setting up the new courts and stuff. Wonderful. I also want to of... know, because Patty did say that she shuts down um, at least Looking Glass, and uh, what Looking Glass has got to do with the chronovisor as well. That's invented exactly. by the, the Vatican. Yeah. 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 If someone hasn't seen, I just went back quickly to our project extension because we did a year of that. And the actual one to do with the genetics is number 12, but the councils and the Looking Glass technology and the triple spiral is number 27, 35 and 36. And she's actually documented a lot of that. And I think that would give the case evidence as well for to substantiate what Alfred's actually presenting here. Mm -hmm. So I would like to do that if that's something that would help, you know, 
further this Sounds and superb. get the truth out. Yeah, so if you're open I to that, that we could continue this while it's still hot. Strike when the iron's hot in the next yeah. meeting, the one hundred. Yeah, that would be meeting, great. Yeah, how, how yeah, I say you, you Albert, so. Would you be okay to that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Wow, you're speaking in three physics meetings. Wow. Oh, <laughs> James has come back, by the way, for us. Yep. Yes, James, you're here. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, well, James is working his mic. Can I just say that Patty is in need of help? Her ill health situation, yeah, Karen, you know that, you're aware of that, right? She, uh, her medical advocate left, and that was uh, the only person who could help him, or her. I mean, the only person who could help Patty has left. It's about a month ago. So we had an R&D meeting last night, Fred, James, Ami, Pontus, and the rest. And we did a, a, a meditation guide, a meditation healing circle for Patty. And we urge you to send same send healing energy to her. She needs help. And if you can uh, uh, pay for it, that would be great as well. She needs money to get medical help and I suppose to relocate as well because where she is, she can't get help much. Thank you, folks. Sorry. Over to you, James Fress. Uh, Matthew, you had a question. Uh, unmute yourself, please, and ask your question to Alfred. Hello. Hi, Alfred. Hi there. I was just wondering, <clears throat> I was just wondering um, if you know what the name of the base is in the UK that you mentioned at the beginning, where the MK Ultra operations take place. Yeah, you know, I I can. Uh, it's in it's in Scotland. It's right yeah. next to uh, Finhorn. It's mentioned in my book, and right. I can I can email that to Crystal. I can email that passage to Crystal. Yes, please. And uh, uh, she can send it to you. But, right. but that cool. was uh, a base of the Royal Air Force Base right next to Findhorn. And that's how they got Findhorn going was through synthetic telepathy from the Royal Air Force Base. And everybody thought it was, oh, it's the spirits and all this. And it wasn't, it was MKUltra and synthetic telepathy. Mm -hmm. Matthew is uh, living in Wales. <laughs> He's curious to find out. Thank you, Matthew, for uh, donating your motor generator to physics. Your good support. No worries. Thank you, bro. Yeah. yeah, so I I will send that after the uh, program. I will go to the text. I will copy and paste it, send it to Crystal, and she can send it to you. And uh, uh, the I book will be out. Right, right after, but but you can quote from that because I'll put the quote and I'll put the link so you can quote it there, you, you know, from that. But if you want to go even more in depth, you can buy a, uh, you know, a reserved copy now at the reduced price and then uh, download it right after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. um, I think I know of one also in uh, North Yorkshire as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. Know. I mean, it, it just, I was in, in, in I, I was tipped off to all of this in 1981 when I first got involved. I came back to Los Angeles and I joined the Los Angeles reading group of the Urantia group there. And there was a uh, retired US uh, Air Force Brigadier General there. And he's mentioned throughout the book because he was a plant from the CIA. And he used to do all kinds of gang stalking at, on me at that meeting. And I knew that he was deep state. And, and then he went and he, he infiltrated the Urantia Foundation and the Urantia Brotherhood and the whole thing. And uh, all that is fully documented by all the witnesses going way, way back. And I, and I had personal interactions with that major general and that's, that's what they did. 
Um, we have to wrap this up, folks, because uh, Denise Bacello has been waiting for more than half an hour already. Yep. Although we finished uh, the first session at half nine, which is only about three minutes ago. So, uh, but press, is James there? James, are you able to speak up? Wow. James, you want to shoot in a, a, an SSP question for Alfred, or do you want Maybe to? Maybe he's traveling. Maybe he's traveling, yeah, going to. Or, uh, we have two questions from uh, uh, Amberlab. Amber and. Uh, yeah, but you know, we, we don't have much time. So please yeah. okay. keep it short, folks. Please, because Denise has been. There's James. Waiting. Oh, Hi. Yes. I'm driving, but uh, yeah, I just want to say, Alfred, keep up the great work. Um, you know, oh, our thanks. videos um, who saw were deleted. He was um, channeling an AI from allegedly four and a half million years in the future. And he was telling people, this AI was telling people to get the Jabiru, but uh, YouTube branded that video as uh, medical <laughs> misinformation. <laughs> he was telling people to do it. So <laughs> they uh, deleted our inter interviews and I, I had no choice but to send everything over to uh um rumble but um yeah oh, that's wild that one andrew basaggio well, that uh, is wild uh, uh i'm afraid i've got a message from denise um she says we are being respectful so she has to do the second session i'm afraid sorry i can't entertain any more question from uh you all sorry so thank you so much Alfred, well, I thank really, you, really thank you, everyone, uh, for your receptive and respectful and interest to this presentation, which uh, I'm amazed because it's an esoteric one. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for being able to bring this thank information. You. It's thank an you. honor and our pleasure to have you here uh, presenting your huge big resource of information and knowledge, Alfred. <laughs> okay, uh, right. So there being no other business now, this meeting, the first session of the 103rd physics meeting is now adjourned to the second session. Thank you, folks.